Hello everyone, um, thank you for joining or um, thank you for watching this um, whenever you get to watch it. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Um, my name is Kate and I'm from Ireland. Um, I'm currently living in Japan. Um, I'm living near to Tokyo, um, but I live, my address is Kawasaki, um, but I'm only about half an hour from Tokyo. So it's amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy to be here um, because before I came to Japan, I would have loved to have watched something like this, like an honest um, account of how things are going and what Japan is really like um, from a foreigner's perspective and from the perspective of a TEFL teacher. Um, so a little bit about me. I came to Japan uh, three months ago uh, so I'm still pretty new to Japan and um, so I don't know everything um, but I can try to answer any questions you have and try to clear up any sort of anxieties that you might have about potentially moving to Japan uh, to teach English. Um, so Japan has been amazing so far and um, anytime anyone has asked me oh what do you think Japan has it going and um, my automatic reaction is always really positive um, I'm really happy here overall. Um, so a little bit about me. I am 23 years old. I'm from Ireland. Um, I'm from Cork, which is in the south of Ireland. Um, I graduated university last year. Um, I studied politics and sociology um, in Trinity in Dublin. And while I loved my degree, um, it's pretty vague and doesn't necessarily have like a specific vocation that comes out of it. So I wasn't too sure what to do with uh, what to do with myself. And I've always been really keen to travel and to, you know, see more of the world. And um, specifically after the pandemic, you know, so much opportunities were stunted and life was sort of put on pause for a while. So since then, any opportunity that I've had to travel, I've sort of just um, gone head first <laughs> without thinking too much. Um, so this is kind of a product of that attitude, <laughs> this whole experience, and I wouldn't regret it for a second. Um, so yeah, when I finished university, I moved home back to West Cork because I couldn't afford to live in Dublin and to uh, save money <laughs> um, because I needed to save money before moving to Japan. I'd sort of settled on moving to Japan while I was in university. Um, the reason I picked Japan, uh, there's a couple of reasons. I wanted to go to somewhere in Asia um, I initially was thinking of going to Vietnam and I still really want to go to Vietnam. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, but from what I kind of was watching on, I don't know, Netflix documentaries and stuff like that, um, Vietnam, I don't think would suit me to live in long term. Um, it looks maybe a little bit too chaotic for me, <laughs> um, which looks amazing. Like, I wish I had the personality type that would suit it, but I'm quite a... Uh, ordered person. <laughs> I quite like things to be, you know, um, how, I, how I'm used to, I guess. Um, so I was like, why not Japan? You know, Japan is a really, it's a very developed country. Um, the, it's extremely ordered, like much more so than Ireland, much more so than what I'm used to. Uh, it's very efficient and it's very comfortable to live in. And it was sort of just something a little bit more familiar, I think. Um, while also being extremely different. Uh, so that's why I picked Japan. So when I moved home, I immediately signed up to a TEFL course and I wanted one that would be remote. So because I lived in West Cork, there was no like um, in-person TEFL courses very close to where I lived. And um, so I signed up to a remote TEFL course with the TEFL Institute of Ireland and I would absolutely recommend them um, they were really, really helpful. Um, the course cost, I think, 1,500, which sounds a little bit expensive, um, but it actually included so much. It, so I signed up to Japan-specific internship, 
Um, so what was included in it was a 120 hour TEFL course, uh, all online, a 30 hour advanced grammar course, which is really helpful because native English speakers, like we don't know much about grammar and we don't know it from, you know, a English second language person's perspective at all. So that was really helpful. And I also did a teaching young learner certificate, which is also 30 hours all online. Um, and at your own pace. I think you just have to complete it within six months of signing up. And if something crops up, you can get in touch with them and you know put it on pause. Um, it's no problem. They're really, really, really helpful. And they're really just like human. Like you're always talking with a person. There's no robots or anything like that. They're always literally a phone call away. Um, all of the team were really really helpful so i'm really glad i went with them also nice to support a local irish company <laughs> if you're irish and watching this and um, so yeah i signed up with that and then it also included um basically a guaranteed job which was you know pretty nice um also included housing assistance um the cultural weekend that explore asia um uh, give to the participants was also included in the cost and uh, I think there were some other smaller things um, like mentorship and everything along the way which um, actually uh, amount to a lot and are really really valuable and um, so I'm very glad I went with um, the internship I did and um, so I kind of got stuck in pretty pretty quickly um, I kind of whizzed through the the TEFL course and um, any time I had like an hour or two spare after work I would always just kind of get stuck in. I found it really interesting um, there was lots about you know, the history of the English language and how the English language spread and some of the kind of more thorny parts of <laughs> it, like colonization and everything. It was really interesting and um, so I was very engaged. It didn't feel like a chore at all. So I really liked it. Um, the, as I said, the uh, advanced grammar course is well worth your while doing um, whatever you want to do in the future. Um, in terms of English language teaching, it's really, really helpful. Um, so I loved that. And I kind of finished the TEFL course within maybe a month and a half. And I was really just going at my own pace. Um, I wasn't in a rush at all. And after I finished that, um, the lovely TEFL Institute sort of handed me over to Explore Asia. And I was so happy to hear from them. Um, a lovely um, employee called Lungile was the, my, uh, the person I liaised with the most. And she's been so nice and so helpful. Um, again, she had lived in Japan before, so she had first-hand experience of what it's like to live in Japan work in Japan as a foreigner and um, so it was really reassuring and there are so many steps <laughs> to moving abroad so much paperwork and admin and Explore Asia made it so easy and approachable and digestible um, and I never really felt overwhelmed and um, which was you know uh, <laughs> it says something about how good a company they are and um, that they were able to kind of keep everything rolling very easily and at a nice pace um, over the last, over the kind of couple of months coming up to uh, when I left. So things like um, having your uh, degree certificate was a bit of an issue for me because I hadn't yet graduated. I only graduated in October and they kind of began to ask for it in maybe July or August and they were so helpful. They were like, it's no problem, just send it to us when you can. Um, so that was really nice um, and they were really understanding of all the kind of individual problems people might have had and also with getting a visa they basically gave me everything I needed to know and um, so it was you know it was really good and then then the couple of weeks before I actually moved they were pretty tricky I started kind of second guessing myself I was like am I really going to be able to move to a completely different country on my own <laughs> um, without having ever really done something like before. I lived abroad on Erasmus, but it was in France and I lived in the Irish Cultural Centre surrounded by lots of other Irish students, which I, most of whom I already knew. So this was definitely 
putting myself out of my comfort zone. Um, so I just kind of kept reminding myself that this is something I've wanted to do for like over a year. Um, I'm going to be able to travel while you know funding it and doing a job that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, using something that is just a natural gift that I have, being able to speak English. Um, so I was like keeping reminding myself of that and um, yeah eventually the kind of last few days arrived and my last day in Ireland was actually St Patrick's Day which was very fitting and I had a lovely day a lovely send off with my friends and family and then I boarded the flight to Abu Dhabi <laughs> and because Ireland can't doesn't fly directly to um, Japan at all I think British Airways does if you want to go from London and so I got on my flight to Abu Dhabi, it was grand, and just watched loads of films, plain food is great, um, and then went from Abu Dhabi to Tokyo. And it was pretty full on for the first week or so. Um, Explore Asia then handed me over to their partner company, who I'm now employed by. Um, and we the training week, which was which is also paid and included in the um, sign up fee, um, what, so we stayed in a hotel and everything so that was all included which was nice and um, that started the day after I arrived so if I was maybe going again I think I would have you know splurged and maybe booked a flight a couple of days before that and um, just so I wasn't wrecked um, starting the uh, training um, but you know it was fine we got stuck in pretty quickly and so, as I said, we were in a hotel. It was in Yokohama, um, which is a lovely, lovely city. It's Japan's second biggest city. It's uh, about half an hour from Tokyo. And it was a lovely place to kind of have my first um, week or so in. It's While it's Japan's second biggest city, it is so much smaller than Tokyo. Like, so much smaller, so much more manageable, um, a lot less. Uh, intimidating and um, train stations are grand <laughs> um, it's just much more manageable than Tokyo for someone who's just moved to Japan so I think that was nice um, place placement choice and um, so the training was brilliant I think it is requirement so you can't opt out I don't believe and um, but it's good that you can't opt out because it's so helpful uh, it's my first time teaching as I said I just graduated so kind of didn't know too much what I was doing. Uh, while the TEFL courses are helpful, um, you know, it's theory. You don't get, well, with my course anyway, I didn't get any practical like um, placement or anything like that. So the, while, the, um, while the training week is intensive, it's really helpful and there's lots of chances to um, put your new skills to the test, you do like demo lessons, you're put into smaller groups with maybe groups of five with like um, an employee from the company who's worked there for years, they give you loads of advice um, they also gave us so many lesson plans to use um, which have just been invaluable and um, there's this thing called like a hub where we can access so many materials, so many flashcards, I've never well, I have made my own lesson plans, but that was just out of choice. You don't have to. So it's excellent for first time teachers. And yeah, a little bit about the actual teaching then. So when the week was up, I think I had about a week and a half um, time off, which is lovely. Got to explore a bit of Japan and everything. And then I started work on the 6th of April. And I work in a junior high school. So Japan has like American system kind of. Um, it has like elementary school, uh, junior high school, or like middle school, and then senior high school. And um, so I'm in junior high school. I just have one school, um, which I'm really happy about because some people that I know have been put in like multiple schools, which, you know, has its, has its positives in that you're getting a bit of variety. If maybe you like, you don't like your school too much, you're not there all the time. Um, but I'm really lucky I'm in one school and it's a lovely school and um, yeah I'm really really happy there it's really big I think it's one of the biggest schools in Japan I think that's what one of the teachers told me and um, I think it has like 1200 students and it's just like uh, like 13 to 15 year olds so 
it's a lot of students and a lot of teachers. I think there's maybe 90 teachers, um, which, you know, was a little bit intimidating going in on the first day and doing my introduction <laughs> in Japanese when I don't speak much Japanese. But uh, they've all been really, really kind and welcoming and accommodating. Um, and the work is a dream. Um, I mean, it's a dream in the sense that it's not difficult. <laughs> uh, maybe if I was a very experienced teacher, I might be like a little bit maybe wanting more of a challenge. But as a first time teacher, I'm happy out. So um, I work as an assistant language teacher, which everyone in my company does. Um, Japan has a system in the public schools where there are Japanese teachers of English and assistant language teachers who are native English speakers or have fluent English. And it's a really nice system, actually, because the Japanese teachers of English are very conscious of the elements of English language that you know, Japanese learners find difficult. And then the native speaker can give, you know, maybe better natural speaking practice and their accents are more you know uh, natural <laughs> um, we are another lovely aspect of our job is that we are expected to give sort of cultural awareness classes and like help to improve their global awareness so sometimes my classes feel like a geography lesson which you know is kind of nice and like some of my students um, maybe had heard of Ireland but didn't know anything about it so my sort of patriotic side is coming out even just talking about europe and they find it really interesting and many young japanese people have never been outside of japan so it's really nice that you can sort of be this source of um outside source to the outside world kind of thing which is it's been really nice and um, the students are lovely and i've never had a discipline problem at all which i think is um, pretty standard across Japan. I think the kids are just, you know, really good and they're very keen to learn, very curious. Um, yeah, and the teachers have all been lovely. Um, because the school is so big, each year group is about like 400 odd people. So I only have one year group per week. So there are 11 classes per year. So I just have 11 classes per week, um, which is so manageable. It's like two or three classes um, a day. And some days I just have no classes because, you know, they are doing exams or maybe they're going on a field trip or a school trip. Or there's, for example, they have sports day, which they spent a whole week practicing for. So I just had a week of, you know, chilling. Um, I learn a bit of Japanese and I read my book um kind of walk around the school and chat to students it's really relaxed um for example this week i've i have had classes and um, i'm doing like their speaking tests with them which has been lovely um but for example i started to read middle march at the beginning of this week and it has like nearly 900 pages and i'm nearly finished <laughs> so there's a lot of free time and you'll never ever have to take work home with you um which is lovely and yeah, um, next I might talk a little bit about sort of social life in Japan. So the social life is, um, it's good. I mean, there's so much to do. There's something for everyone. I'm really into like art. So I love going to different art galleries at the weekends. Um, I also love going for walks in like mountains and stuff. And Tokyo is amazing because well, it's the biggest city in the world with like 36 million people there. You can get into like the like mountains and stuff within an hour. And then even within Tokyo City itself, there is like beautiful shrines, beautiful parks and everything. So it's not overwhelming at all. And that was something I was a little bit worried about before I came. I was like, God, will I feel like very overwhelmed or kind of claustrophobic in in the city but um i don't at all it's really nice it's sort of almost um one city that com that's comprised of lots of smaller cities so you can go to like aki habara which is like crazy area for like uh gaming and like anime and stuff if that's what you're into 
I'm not personally into that, so I've never been there, but it looks fun. Or you can go to an area like Shimokidazawa, which is really cool, very laid back, loads of amazing vintage shops, um, nice bars, um, it's kind of more like a town feel. Um, so there's so many parts of Tokyo, and I have been on one trip, um, like one big trip, outside um, of my general region. Um, I went to Kyoto and Osaka like two weeks ago and it was so nice. Um, my sister and her boyfriend came over to visit and it was lovely having people here and being able to show them your life and what you've kind of been up to. Um, so we went to Kyoto on the bullet train, the Shinkansen, which is amazing. Like it's, it took me two hours to get to Kyoto and then on the way back uh, I couldn't afford the Shinkansen, it's kind of expensive, it's about 100 euro each way. But for example, the Shinkansen takes two hours, the bus on the way back took eight and a half hours. So it is really worth the money, but um, it's, you know, it is it is expensive. Um, but yeah, Kyoto was amazing. It's like when you think of Japan, it's sort of, you're thinking of Kyoto. It's the ancient capital of um, of Japan. So there's so much history there, um, beautiful, like iconic um, shrines, beautiful bamboo forests, um, the pe even the differences between the people in Osaka and, and Tokyo was amazing. Like the people there were super, super friendly and um, super laid back, uh, much more sort of gregarious um, than the people in Tokyo. Um, and that's saying something because the people in Japan generally are really friendly. Uh, for example, I went out for a few drinks with a friend last Friday and we went to um, Golden Guy in Shinjuku and people, you just walk along the street, like tiny little streets with loads of bars and people will just call out to you and be like, come in, come in. And then you just go into whatever place takes your fancy and you have the best time with people. And like, maybe you'll never see them again. Um, they'll probably add you on Instagram, which is really funny. <laughs> I just have all of these random Japanese people on Instagram now and I'm like who, who are you again um, but you just have the best time with them um, they're really really friendly and it's genuine as well it's not like it's um, just uh, affectation or anything it's really genuine um, and it's been I, my Japanese is extremely basic which you know it's completely my fault um, but the Jap the level of English here is pretty poor um, especially considering it's like such a wealthy country and um, it's the jet level of, of English is pretty bad and you know you're still able to make connections beyond um, beyond the sphere of language you know you can still have a laugh together there are so many cultural references that um, sort of transcend language and stuff which has been such a fun aspect of, of living here and um, yeah I've been I've been really loving that um, so for the next sort of 10 minutes, I might have a look at some questions. Okay, so let me see. So the first question is, um, what's the best part of teaching in Japan? I personally think the best part is it's really friendly for first time teachers with the whole ALT and JTE system. That's, um, it's, you know, it's really easy to get used to and the Work-life balance is great. My um, hours are really nice. I work from 8.30 to 3.20, uh, five days a week. Um, we also get like five weeks off for summer. So I think it's from maybe mid to late July till the end of August. So that's really nice. It's all paid as well. So you won't be down any money. Um, we also get two weeks off for Christmas. I was a bit worried I was gonna be working on Christmas day because it's not a national holiday here. Um, but I'm not. I have two weeks off, so I'm hopefully going to go skiing or something, which will be fun. And you also get all the national holidays off. So there's like 18 national holidays, which is like way more than most countries, I think. And they're all paid holidays as well. And you also get 10 paid holidays, 10 of which are allocated by the company. So five of mine are like in the Christmas break period. And then I have five more to use um, up when I like. Hopefully, um, I think hopefully my parents might come and visit. I might use them then, but you know, you can use them whenever you like. Um, 
what uh, what's one of the best experiences you've had so far um i think yeah kyoto was amazing just like i've had so many just like oh my god pinch me moments um just like walking around tokyo and just being like everywhere is just so lovely here and just like some of the nights out and i've met like some unbelievably friendly people um yeah there's so many amazing experiences every day is like a novelty um which is a lovely feeling and uh, third question what are the relationships like with the students and other teachers um, I was really pleasantly surprised by how relaxed um, the relationships between students and teachers are here. Um, it's like a lovely sort of bond they all seem to have, even though there are so many students and so many teachers. Um, but like I'll regularly, you know, walk along the corridor and the students and teachers will all be having like a laugh together and stuff. And students are super comfortable around me too, which I love. Like they'll come up and just be like, hello, how are you? Uh, they always call me uh, Kyuto, which is like cute, <laughs> and they're always asking me if I have a boyfriend and funny questions like this, so it's a lovely uh, dynamic. Um, the next question is how easy is it to live in Japan? So Japan has a reputation abroad as being extremely efficient and in many ways this is very true. Um, the public transport is just next level. It's so so dependable it's pretty affordable as well and um, there's also the amazing kombini which maybe you've heard of they're like convenience stores so like 7-eleven and family mart and lawson are the main ones and they are so convenient as the name would suggest um, you can pay bills like use the printers and obviously you can get like any snack you could ever want and um, they're open 24 hours they nearly all have a toilet which you can use even if you aren't buying anything and um, so yeah they're amazing and they're also like you can't throw a stone without hitting a convenience store like they're everywhere and um, like everywhere like you you wouldn't walk two minutes without passing and um, so it's really good and um, next one what are some hard parts of living in japan um, I wouldn't say this is a hard part of living in Japan. It's more something, it's more a reflection on me um, and the fact that I don't speak much Japanese. Like, it's completely my fault. Um, I don't think anyone should go to a country and expect people to speak their language. Um, I think that can be like, you know, an arrogant trait of some English speakers. Um, so, yeah, but having said that, the language barrier is difficult and the level of English here is poor. Um, but you know you get by you, you you manage you use google translate and people are always so happy to help and never make you feel like you're the problem at all like even when i've been to like banks and stuff where you know i've had a problem they're always saying oh sumia -sen, sumia -sen. i'm like it's not your fault that you don't speak english it's my fault that i don't speak japanese <laughs> so that's just something that's a little bit hard also while japan is really efficient and um, there are some elements of life here and like getting set up that are quite, I would say, like paper based and bureaucratic. And um, for example, like setting up a bank account, you have to do it in person. Luckily, my company uh, provides sort of like a helper person that came with me to set up a bank account and they're Japanese. And um, so they were able to do most of talking with me. Um, but even when I got a bank account, I was only given a cash card, uh, which was basically just means that you can you like take cash out of an ATM. So I was like, how will I, you know, order things online or like I need a debit card at some stage. So that was a bit of a conundrum for a while. Um, but I figured it out. I got Wise Transfer, and you can. Uh, transfer money from Japanese bank accounts to like a Revolut card or something that doesn't have high fees and um, so that was um, great that I was able to figure that out because it was a little bit stressful for a while. Um, next question is how easy is it to make friends? Are there many foreigners around? Um, most of my friends to be honest I made through my company during like the training week um, which has been which is really really great. Um, I also joined like an Irish football team, like Gaelic football team, which was a lovely way to meet other Irish people. Um, there are a lot of foreigners in Tokyo. I don't know if that's the case in other parts of Japan. 
I imagine Tokyo has the like highest density of foreigners. Um, but yeah, it's if you put yourself out there, as with anything in life, you'll get something back. So just you know, join expat groups, and there's Facebook groups for everything. Um, so you know, just put yourself out there. Say hello, I am in blah. Would you like to meet up for a coffee? And you know, people are delighted to to respond to these things and delighted to meet you as well. Um, they're most likely looking for friends as well. Um, next question, what is your favourite food there and can you describe what it is? This is a really difficult question because I, what main reason I came to Japan was for the food. I love Japanese food. I always feel so um, nourished and like full, like in a healthy way after eating it. I love ramen a lot. I also love gyoza and I tried okonomiyaki in Osaka, which was great. Um, I'm vegetarian, which can be a little bit difficult to be honest in Japan. Um, it's a food culture which revolves a lot around meat and fish. And even if there isn't directly like a chunk of meat in your food, it'll probably be in there somewhere. So I've adopted a pretty flexible approach to things like broths and like dashi, like fish stock and stuff like this, just to make my life easier. Um, but yeah, it's something to consider um, if you're moving here and maybe you'd like to live in a bigger city um, if you do have sort of strict dietary requirements. Like Tokyo has amazing vegetarian and vegan options, um, as I'm sure they have amazing like halal options, uh, gluten-free options and so on. But I'm not so, so sure if the rest of, the Jap of Japan would be the same. Um, next question, what is the best way to prepare for this experience? Oh, you can never really prepare fully for experiences like this. And I think that's something that you need to accept before coming. I wish I had just been like, you know what, it'll be fine and believed it. Um, but in a practical sense, um, the company I'm here with recommended to bring about 4,000 euro that you have like quick access to um, because I didn't get paid until two months after my arrival date. So we get paid per month and I got paid for the month of April on the 20th of May and I'll get paid for the month of May on the 20th of June and so on. So that's why there was such a long wait. But uh, yeah, the setup costs can be pretty high. Um, like I didn't have to do this, but I bought a bed. <laughs> I didn't like sleeping on a futon and um, just like buying things to my apartment, like, I don't know, like plants and like lamps and kind of like pots and pans and stuff it does add up quite a lot um so yeah just sit, maybe save up quite a, a little bit before you go try to learn a bit of japanese you know basic etiquette is definitely something everyone can learn and there's not much excuse not to have that <laughs> um the second last question asks how much is it for rent and food is your salary enough so my salary is about 1500 euro a month which in Ireland wouldn't be very much, but rent here is, is actually really cheap. My rent for my, albeit tiny apartment, is only about 350 euro a month, including furniture rental. So that includes like a fridge, um, a washing machine. It includes a futon, if that's what you're into, um, a table and chair and like a stove top and stuff like this. Um, my social insurance tax and like phone bill are all deducted from my salary as well each month and then I have about 800 to 900 euro disposable income. I still have to pay my bills out of this but they're not too bad. Um, I would say it's enough to live on if you're being pretty frugal and not going on too many trips. Um, so I have started to teach English with Cambly online it's like a platform basically for native English speakers to chat with um, English learners around the world and you get paid like per minute and you can do as many or as little hours a week as you like. So say if I know I have a trip coming up, I might be like, OK, I'll do 10 hours of Cambly this week. And it's so grand. You just have to chat. Basically, most people just want to to be able to use their English. And um, so it's really easy. It's actually quite enjoyable. And then the last question asks, uh, looking back, uh, what would you have done differently? Um, I think at the start, I allowed like small things to kind of overwhelm me and sort of turn me off trying things a little bit. Like I'd be like, oh, I don't know how to order something, so I'm not going to go into that cafe. Um, but 
looking back, I would just say, you know what, the first time, yeah, it's hard, but you'll be fine and you'll get what you want eventually, even if there's a bit of an awkward um, language barrier or whatever. But um, just to, I think I would tell myself that things get so much easier if you try them and not to let um, not the unknown put, put to put me off something um, because every experience I've had here has been positive. So um, yeah, I couldn't, rem couldn't recommend coming here um, more if you're thinking about it, just go for it and um, don't believe any of the negative things that you see online. They're just clickbait, I think. Um, yeah, I wish I could have watched something like this before I came. So I hope some of you get some use out of it. And if you want to contact me at all, I'll leave, um, I don't use Facebook that much, so I'll leave my Instagram handle um, in the comments. And good luck um, with whatever life has in store for you, whether it's coming to Japan or going elsewhere or just you know teaching English in your own country and um, it's an amazing passport uh, to the world so good luck and thank you for watching <laughs>